To talk about polynomial division, it's helpful to first recall how we perform long division with numbers. Some language, this is referred to as the dividend. The number that we are dividing by is referred to as the divisor. So if we set this up in a division bracket with the divisor on the outside and the dividend on the inside, we don't look at the whole dividend. We start with the first digit and we only go on to the next digit if the first digit isn't enough. So let's go all the way to 46 and we ask ourselves how many times does 8 go into 46? which we would say is five times, placing the five over the end of where we were just looking. And then down below the 46, we're going to write down what eight times five is, which is 40, right? We're gonna take the five that we just found, multiply it by our divisor, and as we go down, we subtract to give us a 6 here, and we go ahead and bring down the next digit, which is a 7. Then we repeat this process. So, again, starting over from the beginning, how many times does 8 go into 67? We would say that goes in 8 times. And below the 67, we will write the 8 that we just found times the 8 that is the divisor. So this is the same 8 each time, which is equal to 64. And then we subtract. When we get to a number that is smaller than the divisor, we know we're done. We call that number the remainder. Up here, we have what we call the quotient. And we would write our answer in the form quotient plus remainder over divisor. I don't actually write the plus in the case of a mixed number because it's implied by this form. But with polynomials, I am going to want to put a plus in between there. So we're going to adapt this process now to work with polynomials instead of just numbers. And so in this example here, we again start by identifying a dividend and a divisor. When I'm done with the division process, I want to write my answer in the form quotient plus remainder over divisor. So here are my steps. The first step is to set this up in a division bracket. So let's go ahead and write that out, what that would look like with the divisor on the outside and the dividend on the inside. The divisor is x minus 4. And the dividend is 2x squared minus 3x minus 12. So just like in my numeric example, I started by looking at the beginning of the divisor. I'm going to do the same thing here, but when I say the beginning, I specifically mean only the first term. So what we're looking at now is step two, which is find a term in the quotient by dividing first term of dividend divided by first term of divisor. So that is going to look like this, 2x squared divided by x, which I'm going to put right here. I can see that the x squared over x would leave me just one factor of x. And so in my quotient, I'm going to put 2x. My next step is to multiply that term I just found, which I'm calling q, 
just to give it a name, by the entire divisor. So I take the 2x that I just found, I multiply it by the divisor, x minus 4, and I write it below my dividend. So I have to distribute. That first term is going to be 2x squared, that second term is going to be minus 8x, and I am subtracting this from the dividend, just like I did in my numeric example. Now, I am going to come through with another color to subtract and change both signs. The reason I do this in another color is because if I do it in the same color, I won't be able to tell by looking at that plus that I've already changed the sign, and it's harder to keep track of than you might at first realize. So here's what happens. The first terms drop out, and that's going to happen absolutely every single time. Because of the way we constructed that term in the quotient, it is going to be the case that when we multiply it by the divisor, we get the same as the first term. So those will drop out. Then I'm going to go ahead and just combine terms here because I've already changed the signs. Negative 3x plus 8x gives me 5x. And I go ahead and bring down that minus 12 term. And now I'm ready to start this whole process over again. Looking at just the first term of the dividend and the first term of the divisor again, I'm going to calculate 5x divided by x, which gives me 5. These terms in the quotient are all added, so I'm going to put a plus 5 here. Now, the next step is to take the 5 I just calculated, multiply it by the whole divisor, x minus 4, and put the result underneath my dividend. So that's 5x minus 20. Again, I get ready to subtract downwards, for which I come through with another color to change both signs. And then I go ahead and combine like terms. Again, 5x minus 5x gives me 0. That should happen every time. And negative 12 plus 20 gives me 8. Sign errors are by far the most common mistakes in this process, by the way. All right, I can tell that I'm done with this, but let's be really specific about how we can tell. With our numbers, we kept going until we got a number that was smaller than the divisor. Here we keep going until we get a degree that is smaller than the degree of the divisor. This is a degree zero polynomial. My divisor has degree one. So I repeat this process according to my last step here until the degree of the result is lower than the degree of the divisor. As soon as that happens, I go ahead and call that my remainder, and then I find my quotient also up here in the top, and I write my answer in the form quotient 2x plus 5, plus remainder 8 over divisor x minus 4. I do need to put the plus in between the quotient and the remainder over divisor term. All right, so let's go on to another example. This one being a polynomial with a missing term. What I mean by a missing term is that if we look at the dividend here, we start with a degree 3 term. The next term has degree 2. There is no degree 1 term. 
And then we go right to our degree zero term, which is that constant. So if we don't have every power from the highest power down to degree zero represented in our polynomial, then what we have to do is fill it in with a zero. This is necessary in order to make the terms line up when we get to the subtraction part. If we don't do this, then we have to be very careful about how we subtract and what terms we combine, and we will probably find that everything doesn't stay aligned as nicely as it did in the example we just finished. So I'm going to start this by putting my divisor on the outside. That's x squared plus 2. And again, my dividend on the inside. That's 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus that 0x that we said was necessary plus 5. And again, I'm going to start by just looking at the first term of the dividend and the first term of the divisor. At this stage, I'm not going to write out the computation because we have done that for one example. This process feels much simpler if I can just do that in my head. 2x cubed divided by x squared is going to leave me 2x. Now I take that 2x and I multiply it by the whole divisor, x squared plus 2, and write it below the polynomial. That is 2x cubed plus 4x. Whoops. I do want to align that 4x with the 0x so that my like terms are lined up in the step in which I do this subtraction. So again, I'll come through with another color and change both signs. This time my second term is positive. I will just put a negative right in front of it so that I know when I go to combine terms, I can treat that as a negative 4x. So again, first terms drop out. I'm going to bring down this negative 3x squared. 0x minus 4x gives me negative 4x. And I'm going to bring down also this plus 5. It's a good idea to just bring down all of the remaining terms each time you do this. Now starting over from the beginning, first term of the dividend divided by first term of the divisor gets me a negative 3. Taking my negative 3, multiplying it by the whole divisor, I get negative 3x squared minus 6. Again, lining up the terms with the like term that it's ready to combine with in the previous line. So these drop out. Oh, sorry, I come through and change both of these signs with a different color. Those 3x squared terms drop out. The negative 4x comes down. And plus 5 plus 6 gives me plus 11. At this stage, I have a degree 1 expression. Last time I stopped when I got a number, but my divisor in this case is degree 2. So the result is a degree that's strictly less than the degree of the divisor, which means it's time to stop and call this the remainder. So I'll write my final answer as quotient, which is 2x minus 3, plus remainder, which is negative 4x plus 11, over divisor, which is x squared plus 2. And that is polynomial division.